Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. Welcome back to another video on my series on how Toyota Safety Sense works. In the previous two episodes, we talked about the radar sensor, we talked about the front recognition camera, we talked about razor, uh, radar guided control, cruise control, we also talked about pre-collision. In today's video, we're going to be focusing more on that camera, we're going to talk about lane keep assist and automatic high beams. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you watch the two other videos so you can have a continuation. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and let's not keep you waiting more. Let's dig right into it. Let's start with lane keep assist. Now, this system, like it says, like the name, it uh, helps you stay in your lane. There are three types of this system. Let's talk about the first one very briefly because it's really not, not so great. So the first one is, which is the ancient one if you would, that's a while back, uses the camera, scans the road again, the camera can see, like we said. So it looks at the lane markers, it recognizes them, okay, I see these lines coming up. So when you get too close to it, it's gonna start beeping at you and that's about the scope of that. That usually is called LDA. It was available in some early RAV4s. Eh, I don't know, I don't like the car yelling at me so I'd rather use my eyes and not be all over the road. The second system that they introduced was active, if you would. It actually does steering assist. So it's also gonna pick up the lanes, but then, after the camera has been in the car for some time, it made some new friends. It made friends with the power steering, specifically the electric power steering. So now, when you're driving down the road, the camera is looking. Here are the lane markers. I see them. I like them. We're good. Then all of a sudden, I got the guy behind the wheel or the gal got a text and they started reading it and now we're veering off to the side. Well, the, the camera sees that. It's like, yep, he's got the text. He's going to the right. He's going to the right. Here's the lane. You're going to cross into the next lane. It's going to send a quick text to Mr. Power Steering and tell him, hey man, can we uh, push the car this way a little bit? So it's going to immediately kind of swerve the car gently back into the lane. But this system, it, while it's great, it's okay, it has huge limitations because what it's actually gonna do in the eyes of a, let's say a state trooper is, it's gonna make you look like a drunken driver. Because you're driving down the road and you swerve to the side, the car will push it back this way and then you'll start swerving to the other side and it's going to push it back this way. So basically we're uh, driving a little all over the lane. That was the limitation of this system. It only worked over 32 miles an hour, didn't really work full speed and it annoyed a lot of people because all of a sudden you're driving and let's say sometimes, you know, you want to lean a little bit, either there's someone emergency stopped on the highway or there's a cop and you're trying and kind of, you can't move lanes, but you're kind of, all of a sudden you get close and it just pushes you back. Or my favorite situation, which, which really makes me always just turn it off because I don't like what it does there. You're driving on the highway and, and let's say the highway is turning and you have a huge semi next to you. Now, when semis make that big turn, they kind of, because of their length, they kind of come close to your lane. And I don't know about you, but I get kind of nervous getting right that close to a semi that is turning like that. And then I kind of swerve away from it just a little bit, kind of be on this side of the lane. All of a sudden, the lane keep assist pushes me back right onto the semi. It's like, would you stop doing that? So that was the limitation of the system. All it does is it looks through the camera, it looks at the lines, picks up the lines, if it can, of course, and then just keeps, every time you get too close to the line, send a text, power steering, move us this way. Now you can adjust the sensitivity or you can even turn off steering assist if you want, but that was that, was that system, it works okay, I guess, but 
it was not that great. But the reason I made this video was not to tell you that the system was not so great. It, it's not. But to talk about the latest and the greatest in the system, which now I think it is good. Lane Tracing Assist, LTA. This is the latest integration of the system. I think it works really good because now the engineers I can imagine also had another meeting, closed meeting, behind closed doors and a big table. And they decided, well, wait a second, what about this guy? What about the radar sensor? Why are we just keeping this guy out of this loop? That's just it's already there. Why don't we just use it? So now what it does is it picks, uses this radar sensor to look at the cars on the other lanes and use that data combined with the pictures on a better camera, even a more improved camera that has better quality. And now it can pick up distance and it knows how wide that lane is. So what it's actually going to do is it's going to center you in that lane, not make you look like a drunken driver. You go left and it pushes you right, you go all over the place. And I did say left and it's actually right. Oh well. That's the whole idea of the system. The lane tracing assist, LTA, works with, with the radar sensor to pick up what's going on actually. Where is the car on your right? Where is the car on your left? Where is the lane? And now it's gonna be able, it has enough data to calculate, okay, I'm gonna keep you exactly centered in the lane. And I had the, the privilege of extensively testing this system and it does work very well. There are a few things that doesn't work very well, but there are actually precautions and we'll talk about this in a bit. So this system, Works great. Now you're driving on the highway. It's, it actually keeps you in the center of the lane as long as it can see. Now, if you live in an area where the roads are well paved, the, mar the lane markings are very clear and you can see them very easily, so does the camera. But if you say uh, live around Chicago where uh, we love to destroy our roads, cars, and everything else in the winter. Usually those uh, lane uh, markings are not very clear and the system just goes, I don't like this. I don't see them very clear. We're not gonna do anything. And it disengages and it disengages and it just doesn't, doesn't work continuously. It works great, then it stops. Then it works, then it stops. So this system is limited by what it can see. If it can't see the lane markings clearly, it's not gonna work. Another problem. Also a Chicago special. When there's snow on the road and uh, the city has, uh, you know, they're falling behind on cleaning snow. Well, you can't see the lanes. You can have the most beautiful lane markings, but if everything is white, it doesn't know what's going on. And it's gonna just, we're not doing this, forget it. Now on your end of the spectrum as a driver, when the lane tracing assist is available in your car, you need to kind of watch it when it engages because it's going to display it on the little multi-information display and it, you're going to know that you're actually in LDA. Usually it works best on highways and like country roads where everything is open, not in city traffic. It just doesn't work so well at lower speeds doesn't pick up everything very well. It needs to be, it's more designed for highway use, open road use, if you would. It works really good on open road. It does work in city, but eh, it starts scaring you a lot. And that's when I would be like, you know what, this is not working. The other thing that you absolutely must know is you have to keep your hands on the wheel. Remember, there's the government breathing down all the automotive industry. It's not a self-driving car. It's not autopilot from a Tesla. No, although I think it's capable, but it's not there yet. It picks up when it, when it turns the wheel to keep centering, it's watching the force because it's, it, remember it's, it's activating the power, electric power steering. And at this, at this level of advancement, it's watching the power steering input. Okay. I'm giving the motor of the power steering 
this much force to move. If it moves too much, it's going to know you're not holding the wheel. And it's going to start yelling at you. And if you don't listen to it, it's going to kick you out. It's going to just cancel everything. Nope, we're not doing this. So your hands must be on the wheels. If you're not, it's going to know and it's going to tell you. It's just the way it is that I think the system is capable of doing it, but the government won't allow it yet. So that's something you need to know if you're driving it also. Some of the limitations and some of the odd things that you need to know about that the system really should not be used. Number one, and this applies to actually all of them, especially the active ones, not the warning one. If you have a spare tire on the car, like a little donut spare tire, do not use the system. Because now, especially if you have it in the front, oh, it gets very scary when you do that. Because now your one wheel is smaller than the other, and now it's trying to correct things, and it's going to overcorrect on one side, and all of a sudden the car will just jump, and it's going to go in a little frenzy, and it's going to scare you. Trust me, also try that. It's not, it's not cool. Also, with this system, if you rely on it, and you like it, and you use it consistently, consistently make sure you remain with the same size tires so no aftermarket wheels because then you change the steering effort and this system is calibrated to work with the original wheel so if you go changing things it's gonna go all over the place another thing is and this is very important and this one was actually in my testing of this system i almost crashed because of this this is not an admittance it was my fault it's actually clearly written in the owner's manual about this do not use the system in construction zones. The reason for that is you might be from another part of the world. I wonder if it's the same. It probably is. When there's construction, they usually change the lanes and they remove the old markings and put new markings. And now there's just a spaghetti of all kinds of lines on the street. Well, this system, remember, it's not a human brain. It doesn't know it's a construction zone. It doesn't, it's, it's just looking, okay, I see the lanes. I was this close from crashing into a concrete barrier because it picked up the wrong lines and it continued going straight and here's a barrier and the lines were actually going this way. And I was like, whoa, what's happening here? What's happening? Okay, let's just turn it because I don't like this. So do not use this in construction zones because it's, there's all kinds of different lane markings and the computer only can do so much and it could lead you in a very bad situation. So make sure you always, also additional to this, you always should supervise. You always should be watching, paying attention. Do not trust these systems completely. This is not an autopilot. This is not, you have to supervise. You have to be 100% aware, 100% there. You can just relax and watch it. It's actually relaxing on a long drive. I took a long drive with it and it's very relaxing to use it, but you gotta supervise. Another thing that will uh, really uh, call for disaster on this system, do not use it when you're towing. This, is, it, this comes, you would think this is common sense, but people forget. And, and look, unless you do this every day, you tow every day for a living or otherwise, we tend to forget that we're towing something, especially when we're out there in the open road. What happens is crosswind pushes your, your whatever you're towing, and now it's pushing the car this way, and the system's trying to push you this way, and all of a sudden you're going to start zigzagging like that, and it's going to get you in a scary situation. Don't use it when you're towing. Turn it off. All these systems, by the way, you can turn them all off, and all of a sudden it's as technological as a 55 Chevy with nothing but a normal car. All these systems can be turned off, even the pre-collision, everything. I maybe forgot to mention this in the previous videos, but all these systems can be turned off. So whenever you feel uncomfortable about their presence, just turn them off, send them home. That's simple as that. One more thing about this system. Anything that goes wrong with the camera, the system gets disabled. So again, the same things apply windshield and issues with the windshield wipe bad wiper blades it's going to affect the system and it's not going to it's going to stop working and that's really the only problem with it this system is more software than anything else because the components are already there oh also by the way the radar sensor also affects it because it does use it another thing i wanted to tell you about before we wrap up this episode when you 
turn, when you change lanes, left to right, whatever direction it is, when you turn on your turn signal, the system could be on, but it's gonna momentarily stop. It's not gonna activate because now you're telling the computer, hey, I'm changing lanes. It's gonna keep watching, see the lane change, and when that turn signal stops, it's gonna continue. One thing that uh, some people turn off their turn signal, they kind of forget it. You know, we all have busy lives and we forget things. Make sure you turn it off because otherwise it won't activate again. It'll just keep waiting. It's like, okay, we're turning, we're turning. It's not gonna do anything. So make sure you turn off your turn signal when you make your lane change. You could also use the lane change function. Just hit the turn signal stock a little bit. It'll change lanes and life's good and we move on from there. So automatic high beams, and automatic high beams is really good and not good, if you would. It's great for safety, it's not great when it doesn't work so well, and there are situations where it doesn't work so well. It also uses, a, guess what, the camera. It uses the camera, it's also scanning lights at night. It's, it's gonna look for any source of light, cars, houses, any source of light, really. If it doesn't see anything, it's pitch dark out there, it's gonna flip the high beams on, just so you can see better. When it sees anything that comes in its field of vision that resembles a light, whether it's a house, post, whatever the case may be, it's gonna shut them off. Because who likes driving in front of someone with high beams? Nobody. So it, it's very active. However, there are a few, uh, odd situations where it would just not do anything. And these are the situations when you need to be aware, just flip your stock back or turn it off and flip it, do something to stop it. Let's say the light, the incoming car or the incoming light is behind a tree. It might not pick that up. If the incoming car all of a sudden appears, it could not pick that up for a little bit of time until it completely sees it and, and shuts off. So the automatic high beams, they're very simple. Again, they're software, there's nothing physical to break. It's very simple, you turn it on and really forget it, turn, like uh, set it and forget it type deal and it'll activate at night, it's nice. If you live in the city, it's not really gonna work very well, but if you live in you know, suburban areas or country roads, it's gonna work really well. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. In the next episode, which there is no next episode on this. Well, that about wraps it, guys. I hope you learned something new in this series. However, I will say one thing, and before we wrap this video up, I'm actually gonna continue on this series. There are a few other systems that I'd like to talk about, like blind spot monitor, parking assist, and all the other components that, in my opinion, they're also safety components. They're just not officially in the Toyota Safety Sense name. So until then, I hope you learned something new. I hope now you can know how these cars work a little bit more, how these systems work. Don't forget to give this video a like. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.